Hello, and thank you for joining this Onc Live TV peer exchange. This program will feature expert panel discussions highlighting specific clinical information on the treatment options and future trends in thyroid cancer. My name is Dr. Ezra Cohen, and I'm a professor and associate director of Moore's Cancer Center at the University of California in San Diego. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Marsha Bros, MD, PhD, Associate Professor of Aberson Cancer Center and Director of the Thyroid Cancer Therapeutics Program at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. Naifa Busedi, MD, Associate Professor, Endocrine Neoplasia and Hormonal Disorders at the University of Texas, MD Anderson Cancer Center. Gary Clayman, MD, Professor of Surgery and Chief Section Head and Neck Endocrine Surgery, Division of Surgery, at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. Manisha Shaw, MD, Professor, Internal Medicine at Ohio State University College of Medicine. Frank Warden, MD, Professor of Internal Medicine, Director, Division of Hematology Oncology Fellowship Program at the University of Michigan Medical School. We will begin by discussing the treatment options available for radioactive iodine refractory differentiated thyroid cancer. We will also discuss diagnosis, treatment selection, and explore future trends in the treatment of advanced thyroid cancer. Thank you again for joining us today. Let's get started. In this first segment, we will review the treatment options available for radioactive iodine refractory differentiated thyroid cancer, RAI refractory DTC, which are extremely limited. Currently, standards of care are evolving in RAI refractory DTC. Overall, about 10 to 15% of patients with DTC are truly radioactive iodine refractory, and these patients will be the focus of discussion in this segment. Nefa, what is the average life expectancy for patients with radioactive iodine refractory differentiated thyroid cancer? Yeah, um, that's a good question, a question that patients often ask, and um, the way we sort of quote it is that 50% of patients will live out uh, five years or median life expectancy of about five years once they have distant metastases or thyroid cancer that's spread outside of the neck. And Frank, how do you define metastatic radioactive iodine refractory differentiated thyroid cancer? So we use um, three definitions basically. I tell the patients that um, if you receive a maximum dose of 600 millicuries of um, radioactive iodine, if you have um, uptake in lesions in your radioactive iodine, and some don't take up lesions. Um, and then we also, um, when we give patients radioactive iodine therapy, if they have uptake, and then after six or 12 months, perhaps, there's disease progression on rescanning, then we call those patients radioactive iodine refractory. In addition, patients who have PET scans that are positive invariably are, are radioactive iodine refractory. So multiple definitions and, and multiple um, ways that we can determine a patient to be radioactive iodine refractory. At that point um, in the progression of the disease, uh, Gary, what role does surgery have? Surgery is an important role for the local regional environment. And so we can't lose sight that despite that there may be distant disease, that the local regional environment we need to keep a watchful eye on it. We don't want to go back into the past with the morbidities of uncontrolled local regional disease. Lastly, when we think about therapies, we have to realize that surgery is a complete response therapy mm -hmm. uh, in the local regional environment in 99 plus percent of patients that undergo surgery for that local regional environment. So it's an important tool throughout the span of the patient's care. Thanks, Gary. Let's talk about radioactive iodine uh, for just a moment. Nefa, when do you use radioactive iodine in differentiated thyroid cancer? So um, the role of radioactive iodine is it's still the first, one of the first uh, molecular targeted therapies. And so it plays a very important role in thyroid cancer um, in terms of uh, decreasing the risk of recurrence in the adjuvant setting and uh, for ablation. Um, 
beyond that, when patients have distant or local regional metastatic disease um, that is iodine avid or takes up radioactive iodine, there is a role for further use of radioactive iodine or multiple doses of radioactive iodine to a point. We can um, uh, achieve complete responses in these patients with radioactive iodine. Um, we tend to hold off for about 12 months before giving a second dose of radioactive iodine rather than giving it too soon as radioactive iodine can continue working. But once we see that the patient is either continuously taking up radioactive iodine but we're no longer causing um, response by either biomarkers or by imaging criteria, then we hold off on further radioactive iodine therapy uh, because there are potential adverse events from radioactive iodine. And or if their uh, lesions are non-radioactive iodine avid, then we don't uh, continue to, we may give one uh, treatment uh, empirically to see if they take up radioactive iodine and then stop from there.